All right, guys, so today I'm gonna tell you why the 996 is the most appreciated Porsche of its time and why it's the best deal right now and why you should get one before it's too late. Here's the thing about these cars. A couple years ago, you could buy a car like this for like five grand, right? Everybody didn't like the headlamps in it, the headlights, uh, because they are a little bit different looking, a little bit bigger. I think everybody's moved past that now at this point. And as time goes on, you could actually buy conversion kits to convert it to 997, 987 style headlights. You could buy many different aftermarket kits to make it look way better. That have black backgrounds and halo lights, and all kinds of different stuff. And I think that moved the market a lot on these cars. So the biggest concern about these cars is bore scoring. Bore scoring, everybody is petrified of that in IMS. IMS bearing, there's a lot of options out for those now. Um, it's about 500 bucks for all the stuff right now for that, for the extractor and install tool, along with the bearing itself. The bearing itself is about 300 to $500, depends on what you want. But if you change that once with the correct bearing, you don't really have to worry about it. If the car has higher mileage, chances are the IMS is not gonna go out because it's already been done. And I guess at some point, you could probably, get an inspection scope, you could probably chase that through the bell housing and look at the, the number on it and see what the date code is on it or what brand it is by the part number that's on it. Uh, that's how we diagnosed this thing and figured out that it was replaced. We ordered a new one, but it shipped from Poland or somewhere. It like never got here, right? It never got here. So we do have the tools for it, but we never did the bearing. Kind of find out it was the same bearing that we had ordered for it. That's why it looks so new and looks so good and no problems. Bore scoring, if the car has low mileage, that's when your bore scoring scare comes up. We see that with 997, 987, 986, and 996 cars. Um, even some of the newer stuff has still got bore scoring. So there is that. There again, the car has to be low mileage for it to have bore scoring. It's not gonna acquire that at a high mileage situation. Uh, a lot of those cars have 20 and 30,000 miles on when that occurs. The ones you see for sale right now that have bore scoring are very low mileage examples, 30 to 60,000 miles or less. And, you know, we've seen a few of these 987 Caymans. We just found one on there. Um, there was a bore score one. He still wanted like 17 grand for it. Um, that's a lot of money for a car that needs that much work. You know, cost-wise for us, it's we figure it's over a thousand bucks. Um, if I source the sleeves myself and had the local machine shop do all the work, it's about a thousand bucks. So then you got to figure you have all the maintenance to do. You know, this car is a maintenance hog. We needed the PCV or the air oil separator, hoses, fan, like all the other stuff, you're gonna rack up pretty quick. If the car only has 30,000 miles on it, you're not gonna need all that stuff. But some of the stuff you'll have to replace no matter what, just to make sure, right? We're not into taking chances with this stuff. That's why we went a lot further with this yellow car to make sure there was no issue with it. Um, right now, the market on these. There's one of these on there at this very minute with an engine that doesn't run and the oil filter full of brass shavings, which means IMS bearings come apart or other things. Um, and he still wants 22,000 for it. Uh, so we went from 5,000 a couple years ago from running driving one five to 7,000 to low twenties for a burned out broken one, essentially. Um, how much does a good one of these go for? Like a really nice one with good miles, six speed, it would have to have six speed this year, have to have black interior, no convertible. So a, a coupe with black interior and a six speed. Um, I would say if it had, let's say 105,000 miles, I would think you could probably get mid to high twenties out of it. They're that high right now. Um, what's this car worth being ugly yellow? I, we really don't know. There's nothing to even compare it to. Mechanically, this thing will be pretty much perfect and have no issue at all. Uh, we have all new, we have everything for it, right? Everything will be done. And uh, so there is that. If you have a chance to buy a 996 right now 
for a good price, I'd highly suggest you do it. If you don't, if it's not already too late around the, on the very tail end of it, if it's not too late, um, there is a massive capital being made on these cars, but the word's caught on and now it's hard to find them for a good price, but there still is some out there. And will we buy another one after this? Maybe, if I can find a good deal on one. We'll definitely buy one that's broken and uh, another one that's got coolant in the oil or another one that's bore scored or IMS failure possibly. Um, unfortunately, the engine for used engines is about 15, uh, 12 to 15 grand for just a running engine, but then you have to do everything to it. It might be bore scored too. You have to do IMS, you gotta do all the other stuff. It's a big money situation, uh, but bought at the right price, definitely worth it. Same with the 987s. 987s are, I would say mid 20s right now for a decent one, for a really, really, really bad one. You're looking 17 to 19. Um, and those are getting harder and harder to find. Also, we're seeing fewer and fewer of those. For a good one of those, it's about 30 grand. So really good cars, really good daily drivers. They are a two-door car, so take that for what you will. And that's gonna be it. We'll see you back again with another video. All right, so today's sponsor is from Top Don. Top Don sends a scanner. This is the Artadag 600S. And this is a very good, uh, this is actually a little more than just a glove box scanner. Well, let's hear me talk about glove box scanners. Uh, this works well to keep in the car in case you have a problem. You know, our catless Cayman, we get a random check engine light. If you're out somewhere, you get a misfire code, be nice to know what's going on. Uh, this particular one does all the oil reset stuff, all the brake pad sensor reset, which is a pretty big deal. This does the battery monitoring system reset. So usually a reset and program. And so you can tell whether it has acid or regular in it. Um, this one does the all the stuff for the tire pressure monitor system. So that's always a big plus. Um, and then your engine, all transmission, ABS, SRS stuff. So it does pretty much everything. This is not a programming, for se, scanner. So you're not going to be able to code a program with it. Uh, but you could do every function that a normal person needs to do. So let's hook up to the Cayman. Okay, so we just hooked it up here. We just got it up, hooked up on the Wi-Fi. So this car supports the oil reset, ETS, SAS, BMS, DPF. Obviously, it's not diesel, so it doesn't have that. Uh, the brake reset, the tire pressure monitoring system, and the ABS brake bleed system, which actually is a pretty good deal. And we have all this stuff. So it's a readiness, readiness monitor for all the emission stuff, uh, repair info, you know, all this other stuff. Let's do just a basic scan here. I'm not sure how, if this one scans the whole car, it might take just a little bit. If it's only scanning the ECU, let's see. Select the access mode. Uh, sure. Okay, then it's asking, so I don't know why the last scan reviewed, it all filled and it all came up. It's kind of almost like the first time you scan something it does that or what's what the deal is exactly. We're gonna run, let it run through this real quick. Got 12.4 volts on it. So now it come up with the VIN number, uh, with the mill status, there's zero DTCs, which this car doesn't have any codes. Readiness completed, so everything's ready as far as mission goes. Readiness not completed, there's two of them. Let's just see what that says. Probably because I just reset this like two days ago, so probably hasn't driven enough to reset all the monitors. Then let's we'll just see if it'll tell us anything about it. Yeah, so since I cleared the codes, it's not ready to everything yet. I haven't driven it far enough. So then we have the maintenance mode, and that's all your all your reset functions. So you can see right there. Interesting. Diagnose. Let's go in here and we could actually select Porsche. And Porsche. It's gonna connect everything. So, I mean, it is actually a really nice scanner. We'll probably make this 
We use the Autel a lot for these cars right now. We'll probably upgrade it to this. I think this does even more than the Autel we have does. So we have, we could auto search the whole car or manually select. Auto search will take longer if I'm not mistaken. It's gonna scan every module in the whole car. Okay, the VIN number, uh, Porsche Cayman Boxer 987. Let's just run a health report. Are you sure to operate quick text? Uh, I guess. Shows a picture of the car or scan is at 20%. So it's showing a bunch of stuff on here. DME. I'll see what it says on the DME. There was no codes in it. It's probably just going to be that's not ready. No oxygen sensor signal behind Cali Converter. Uh, bank 2. Yeah, so that's the kind of codes we get from having no cats. So I guess they're pending to some degree. I got my thumbs out from in front of it so you can see what's going on. And then we're just going to go ahead and we're gonna clear the codes. Okay. Okay. Let's back up a little bit. Let's look at everything on here. We're just going to scan this car totally out while we're right here. PSM. Oh, that's probably from having the battery I hooked the other day. Let's see. Because then we hooked the battery. We changed. What would we do? We change the starter in this car, so we hook the battery. So through all this stuff, let's. Steering angle. And let's see. We can check all the module information. Tells you all the hardware numbers and everything on the module. We have data stream, so you could function the. Uh, Steering angle sensor and all that stuff. Let's go ahead and clear that. There's no real code there. And then, what's this? What did that say? Porsche supplement impact protection. That's all to do with unhooking the battery. PSM control drive unit. Let's clear that. Yes. And now we've got a all green. Everything is good to go. So I'll go to show you the quick scan did, this quick scan did not get every single module, of course. But when you go actually type in Porsche and type everything in, it gets everything on the whole car. So thanks again to Top Don for sending this to us. There'll be a link in the description below. We'll see if they have a discount code or not. I don't remember how much this costs. I don't think I ever even looked it up. This is a I think it was around a couple hundred bucks. But for something that does this magnitude of stuff, that's actually pretty good, especially the brake bleed procedure, the programming and all the stuff for the um, tire monitor system and reset. And that'll give you full control of your Porsche, no problem at all.